competitive eschatology. Splinters. Sunset. Heat. There are too many. Too many. Heat unimaginable. No flame. There could never be flame here, but more heat than almost anywhere. Surging plasma and searing vapor springing from the surface of the great yellow sphere. That one. That one. Keep turning. And beyond the heat, nothing. Nothing but the endless expanse of void. Saul, help me, Saul. There were too many threats. To her, to the planets, to Saul. So many creatures wanted to eat him. Or worse, dozens of faiths, hundreds of beliefs, thousands of half-remembered notions. They all had a promise of eternal night to uphold, and most were going straight to the source. I can't warn them all. I can't do it. She didn't even know if anyone was watching at this point, let alone heeding her warnings. It was too much. There were too many. But it was all she had left. Saul was fighting off a thousand thousand monsters, and whilst Saul Swisser doted on her big brother, she was under no illusions as to his ability to survive this assault. It's coming apart, isn't it? It's all coming apart. Far, far above her, a titanic red snake the size of Neptune broke through Saul's final line of defense and clamped its jaws into his surface, hungrily sucking the plasma from his form. He flailed at the creature with a wave of unimaginable force, and it screeched in the thin atmosphere. The volume of the roar could level a city through the shock waves alone, tear a mountain to the ground with its vibrations, but here it just rippled across Saul's surface like a stone in the universe's largest pond as he crushed it to a pulp. Eventually, Saul turned it into so much blood and pseudo-reptilian skin but now it was too late. A legion of beasts streamed through the gap in the corona provided by the great serpent's smouldering corpse, each one hungry for a star on which they could feast. There was a... I told you you were lacking. An enormous wave of manipulated gravity washed over Saul, easily enough to wipe him from existence had it not been so finely tuned. I said you would be next. It was wielded with an incredible finesse, the pulses spreading and colliding around the surface of the star, causing millions of pockets of neutron matter to burst into being, as each of the invaders was destroyed utterly, rendered into a state from which naught could survive by forces unimaginable. But I never said it would be me that killed you. Creatures that had lived for untold millennia fled Saul's surface or hid in whatever brief holes in his skin they could find, but it made no difference. The Force found them, and one by one it destroyed them. And you thought it a threat? An attempt at intimidation? More fool you. Saul Swessor cast her gaze into space. A great star could be seen far, far below her but still close in astronomical terms. It was smaller than Saul by a factor of a... a hundred? Perhaps it was more, perhaps it was less, but either way its gravity was a lot stronger than her brother's. Its light flickered rapidly, pulsing in a Morse code stream she realized translated to French. You thought I would kill you. You thought I would crush your pathetic world. And it is this fear that brought me here. The next wave of creatures was already coming, undaunted by the grisly fate of those that had preceded them. The forces split before Saul Swisser's eyes, half splitting off to assault the newcomer. You saw me as an end, an apocalypse in myself, and all such beings have arrived now. Plasma spiraled from Saul's axes, twisting and coiling through space as the great clouds bloomed like scorching flowers. Below Saul's vessel, the newcomer began to manipulate the incandescent mass, twisting it into titanic shafts and walls. You are pathetic. 
all of you, worse than humans, skulking, scavenging, miserable creatures. You will not harm us. We are stars. In the void, the searing, freezing, endless void, SCP-179 laughed as SCP-1548 wiped the horde from existence.